In the perspective of the future, Russia will be able to attack NATO countries because it has focused on the military economy. This was stated by German Defense Minister Boris Pistorius in the Bundestag. The security situation remains very serious for the foreseeable future. We must assume that the Russian army will grow by more than 30% to 1.5 million soldiers in 2026. Russia has focused on its military economy and will probably be able to train its army to the point where it is capable of attacking NATO territory in a few years, he warned. With this in mind, Germany is doing everything it can to strengthen the country's defense capabilities and continue to support Ukraine in the fight against the aggressor now. As early as this year, Germany will hand over to Kyiv, for example, four Iris-T systems and five more Gepard SAUs, most of the 12 Panzer Hobbits 2000 howitzers promised last week, combat drones, several thousand artillery and tank ammunition, up to 40 Leopard 1A5 tanks and 20 Marder armored infantry fighting vehicles, Pistoria said. However, Germany itself is also in need of investment in defense and the army. Although the army is now better prepared for the need to react quickly to any threat, the list of needs of the German army remains long. As a result of the threat from Russia, Germany plans to allocate more than 75 million euros to the country's defense and security needs next year. For the first time, more than 2% of the country's GDP has been allocated specifically for defense, but this figure will also increase in the future call. Recently, Russian President Vladimir Putin threatened NATO with war after the inherently threatening comments issued by Vladimir Putin and the Russian minister, another ally of the president, has added to what appears to be a coordinated series of statements from the senior Kremlin figures. The chairman of Russia's state Duma, the lower house of parliament, this morning accused NATO of being a party to military action in Ukraine, suggesting it was already heavily involved in military decision-making. Vyacheslav Volodin, a close ally of Putin, accused the US-led military alliance of helping Ukraine choose which Russian cities to target, of agreeing specific military action and of giving Kyiv orders. They are waging war with our country, Volodin wrote on his Telegram channel. While Putin's army is trying to break through to Snagost, the Ukrainian armed forces have struck the enemy, who was located at the pontoon bridge across the Sima River. By October the 1st, Putin gave the order to the Russian Defense Ministry to drive the Ukrainian armed forces out of the Kursk region. On September the 10th, the Russian army launched a counter-offensive, Forbes reports. The Frontelligence Insight Analytical Group writes that the counter-attack by the Russian armed forces came as a surprise to many Ukrainian defenders, but no one can hide from the eyes of drone operators. Thus, operators from the 14th Aviation Systems Regiment saw enemy soldiers in the area of the pontoon bridge across the Seam River. Fighters from the 27th Artillery Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces using the HIMARS MLRS immediately launched a series of cluster munition strikes. The video showed that at the beginning of the MLRS operation, there were up to 30 occupiers, and by the end of the missile attack, there were about 13 people alive. On another section of the front in the area of Snagosti, the Russian armed forces managed to regain control of a number of populated areas. 
The 22nd Mechanized Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces counter-attacked the enemy in the area of Snagosti. The front line here is chaotic. Ukrainian forces are represented by airborne troops, battalions, and on the part of the Russian Armed Forces, it is a complete hodgepodge. Experts say that such an army is unlikely to be able to carry out Putin's direct order by October the 1st. However, in reality, this does not mean that the Russian armed forces do not have offensive capabilities. The Russian armed forces have an advantage in terms of manpower and equipment. However, the Ukrainian armed forces have an advantage in that they will not attack but defend. Rather than fighting to the death over a specific piece of land, Ukrainian forces typically fight until they are on the brink of defeat and then move to more defensible positions. However, if enough Russian troops attack simultaneously from different directions, Ukrainian troops could be left without fallback positions. Ukrainian commanders understand this risk. That's why their drones are keeping a close eye on the likely approaches of Russian reinforcements, including any pontoon bridges over the Seam River, and why their best rocket artillery is ready to hit reinforcements before they reach the front lines.